Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott will be touching down in Delhi today, Thursday, with the aim of strengthening a strategic partnership with India. During the visit, Mr. Abbott is expected that uh, he will be signing an agreement on nuclear safeguards that would pave the way for Australian companies to sell uranium to India. To discuss the significance of this deal, I'm joined by Rory Metcalf, an expert in nuclear arms control and India-Australia relations. He joins us now via webcam from Canberra. Mr. Metcalf, thank you so much for joining us. Will this deal between the Indians and the Australians impact greatly on the Australian industry? I don't think that uh, business or industry is really the primary issue here. I mean, there will be, assuming that actual commercial sales go forwards uh, following this, uh, this agreement, there will be some impact on the Australian uh, uranium mining industry, which, although it's one of the biggest in the world, has some of the largest reserves in the world, uh, it still has uh, an enormous amount of development to do. But I, I think we're talking uh, the hundreds of millions of dollars rather than the billions of dollars. There's a wider strategic context, I think, which is more important. You had uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe visiting India uh, earlier uh, this week, but Japan and India were not able to conclude a nuclear uh, technology agreement uh, due to reports of some safeguard issues. Doesn't Australia have the same concerns here? Well, I think a lot of countries have been working to, to build, I think, normal nuclear commerce with India, really following the US-India nuclear deal back in 2008. And Japan and Australia are among many countries. Uh, Canada uh, is another example. France, a lot of European countries that are in principle willing now to do nuclear commerce with India. But clearly there are differences from country to country about the precise safeguards they want. And I think an important distinction here is that Australia is looking to potentially export uranium to India, whereas Japan, it would have been much more about uh, nuclear technology. And having said all of that, the statement uh, released by Mr Modi and Mr Abe at the end of the visit a few days ago really makes it clear that, um, that they're still working towards that agreement. So it's been delayed, but I think it will come in time. But you personally, Mr Metcalf, what are your concerns about other countries having commercial deals with India? I think that there need to be uh, very strong safeguards in place, clearly, for any nuclear commerce with India. But it shouldn't be dismissed out of hand. There was a time a few years ago where many countries, Australia included, uh, simply said we will have no nuclear commerce with India because India hasn't signed the non-proliferation treaty. Now, there are, there are all sorts of reasons for that. It's a complicated history, but there's been a broad recognition in the nuclear suppliers group, the, the group of exporting nations, that they can in principle do business with India, provided there are safeguards in place. What we need to see um, is clarity about the mm -hmm. separation of India's civilian and nuclear uh, reactors. And I think, uh, I, I guess I assume, because I haven't seen the agreement that is reportedly going to be signed in Delhi this week, I assume that mm -hmm. there's been sufficient progress on that issue and of course finally right. um, there needs to be inspections allowance for inspections by the international atomic energy agency uh, to ensure that uranium is not being diverted to military uses if those things can be done then i think broadly countries like australia can proceed to help provide india with uranium for for energy production still many issues to be dealt with uh, rory medcalf from the lowe institute for international policy in canberra thanks so much for your insights